request from Supervisors Rice and Sears to adopt a resolution to ensure family <coughs> unity, community security, dignity, and due process for all Marin County residents. And I'm going to turn to Supervisor Sears. Great. To Thank you. I'll introduce this so. item. So for those of you who may be New York Times readers, you may have noticed an article in last Saturday's New York Times on the op-ed page. It was a piece by Roger Cohen in which he said, if a budget can be viewed as a portrait of a soul, this president's soul is arid, shriveled, and filled with contempt for the needy. Here is a man dismissive of the arts, the environment, the humanities, diplomacy, peacekeeping, science, public education, and civilian national service. In short, civilization itself. <laughs> Amen to that. This resolution that we offer today is one small way to protect and promote civilization by ensuring family unity, community security, dignity, and due process for all residents of Marin County. As many of you may remember, <coughs> in December of 2016, our board passed a resolution that adopts, that affirms equity and inclusion as priorities of the County of Marin and takes a stand against all forms of discrimination and intolerance. The resolu resolution that we're offering today to our board <coughs> and hope that they'll pass it and approve it affirms our belief that fostering a relationship of trust, respect, and open communication between county employees and county residents, regardless of immigration status, is essential to the county's core mission of ensuring the health, well-being, and public safety for our entire community. Now, there's a lot in this resolution. I'm not going to read it all. But I do want to read you the last part of it because in that, in the very last paragraph of the bullet points uh, are four items that our Board of Supervisors will commit to. That's to provide essential services to all county residents regardless of immigration status, to direct the Department of Health and Human Services to review its confidentiality policies to better ensure that eligible individuals are not deterred from seeking services are engaging with county services based on immigration status, to promote the value among all residents of advancing efforts for integrating immigrant and refugee communities, recognizing that a community is strongest when everyone feels welcome, and finally, to support efforts to bring immigrants, refugees, and other newcomers together with the broader community to develop, to develop policies, programs, and initiatives that build inclusive and equitable communities and ensure family unity, community security, dignity, and due process for all residents of Marin County. So, uh, with that, I would move that and our I will second. resolution. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, yes, I'm, before I go to comments from the board, I know the sheriff is here, and I wanted <laughs> to know if he would like to come up and make a statement on this uh, resolution. Yes. Then I'll go to the public after board comments. Good morning, Madam President and members of the board. Um, <coughs> we um, had the opportunity to review the, the proposed resolution, and, and uh, uh, we, we certainly support um, that, that resolution. Um, so, uh, but I, I, I think you wanted me to make a couple of comments about some other things. Um, uh, even though uh, SB 54 is not on the board's agenda, uh, I mean, just a couple of observations uh, of mine um, is, is that um, I don't believe the California legislature has the authority uh, to dictate to local law enforcement <coughs> that they can't <laughs> communicate or cooperate with a federal law enforcement agency, whether that be ICE, uh, FBI, U.S. Park Service. And there's also a current code in which prohibit, prohibits any entity uh, from prohibiting law enforcement from communicating with ICE. And, and lastly, um, absent from the conversation is that um, when somebody commits a public offense and they're arrested for victimizing somebody in our community and they come to jail, they're going to come to the attention of ICE because their fingerprints go through a database and eventually ICE <coughs> is notified in some way, which I don't, I don't know how that all works. So, um, and, and we do allow ICE in the jail. Uh, because it's our belief that once some ha has someone has been arrested, regardless of what the charge is, um, I think they should come to the attention of ICE. And, and there's often times that the, 
person is already on ICE's radar for something else that they've previously been deported. So you can't just say that maybe someone was arrested by what someone defines as a minor crime. They could be come to the attention of ICE for, for other reasons. Um, as I mentioned to a couple of you, uh, the, the Truth Act um, passed uh, in its effective January 1st, and what that uh, requires us to do is to notify in writing anyone that ICE wants to interview. And since January 1st, ICE has come to the jail to interview uh, 30 people who have been arrested. Um, 29 of the, of, of the people have declined um, based on the admonition. And of the 30 people, um, ICE has followed up 12, 12 different times to, uh, 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 for release dates. Um, but, but I think we also, I, so I just, you know, suggest that you read 54 because what's not in there is about public safety. I mean, there are some instances where people could arre be arrested for very, very serious crimes and because we can't put detainers on, on inmates any longer and they could be bailed out and, and returned to the community. So I think there's a public safety uh, issue. There's also things in there about task forces and if uh, local law enforcement is involved with any federal task force, they have to report what they're doing. So, so I think that that is written. There, there's some definitely some public safety issues, uh, and and also people ought to realize uh, w there was a report that just came out as I was in this meeting uh, that ICE produced based on the new administration, and California is on the non-cooperative list uh, with ICE. So people need to know that that California is is not, um, uh, in, in, in at least the way the federal government wants cooperating. Um, you know, I, I wrote, wrote a guest editorial to let people know what our policies and procedures uh, are. Uh, our policies and procedures have been in, point, in, in, in writing for a long time, and regardless of who's in the Oval Office, they'll remain the same. We don't get involved in, in uh, line-level enforcement of ICE, you know, but we will continue um, to allow them to come to the jail. Uh, so. um, Supervisor Ross is yeah. the co- yeah, just very, very quickly so we can get to public comment, and I may, may have some comments at the end. But I just, um, I, I thought it was important that we bring forward this resolution um, at this time to um, make a specific statement by, by the board um, about our commitment to all residents of the county and community, and specifically to address um, some of the ways our departments, our departments sort of policy and commitment around how they deliver services. And I think Health and Human Services is probably the department that has the most inter interaction with the immigrant community. So um, I suspect, um, and I think I, my crystal ball is probably fa fairly um, clear here, that we are going to have many opportunities to make further statements around um, some of the issues that are coming to the forefront with the administration that's in place right now. And I think it is important that we do continue to make public statements uh, and um, potentially take actions as well. But this, um, this resolution um, uh, does what I was hoping it would in terms of really articulating how our departments are going to pursue their missions uh, going forward. So. Um, uh, and one last thing, um, I, as we we get all um, we are all caught up in this sort of resistance and push back and um, the the injustice piece, which is so important uh, as we deal with the Trump administration. But we have to remember that the the true issue here is a lack of good immigration policy, and we need to be pushing for immigration reform and make that front and center something that every individual sort of gets behind and pushes. Our, led, our representatives and, and, and more broadly, because I think it's an economic issue as well as a social justice issue as well as a constitutional issue. And California certainly is a state that can make the strongest statement um, around the incredible um, importance of the immigrant community to our state's um, health and well-being economically, socially, and morally. Thank you. Supervisor Rodoni. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I'm very supportive of this resolution as the next step in what we're doing as a board. Um, I do want to make a personal note, though. I did get an email yesterday from one of our support staff mentioning <coughs> an item in West Marin that this would impact 
um, we're moving temporarily into the firehouse meeting room to provide services there, <coughs> and Medi-Cal and CalFresh will be some of those services, and they're worried that have, if we do not pass this resolution that some of the, their clients won't come there because <coughs> there's a sheriff station there. So I think it exemplifies what the worries are and why we need to provide some security to our <coughs> communities. And I don't think this resolution is perfect. I don't think SB 54 <coughs> is perfect. But it goes a long ways to support our, our communities and what they need. And um, I believe that we probably could not uh, add 54 into this resolution today because we have not noticed it. But I certainly would be in the future willing to consider uh, a resolution supporting uh, SB 54. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Connolly. Thank you. Um, this, this resolution reflects a strong statement by this board that we stand in solidarity with our immigrant communities in Moran. It's unacceptable that anyone in our midst has to live in fear about going to school, about living in their neighborhood, and it absolutely is reprehensible that immigrants are being scapegoated and demonized at the federal level. Um, I support this resolution. I think it, and I'm anticipating a great conversation today about it as well. We have received a lot of comments that there are other issues that can perhaps be included either in this or in a future communication from this board. I'm definitely open to that. And in fact, I think one way to do that would be, um, it's not agendized today, um, SB uh, 54. Uh, however, to bring that matter back and have a conversation around that, I would welcome that. And I think it ultimately is consistent uh, with the values that we're trying to uh, uh, re reinforce today. Okay, thank you. Did you want to add anything? I, or I would, and I'll, I'll only support uh, what my colleague, uh, Supervisor Connolly, just said. We can't really get, we can't make amendments addressed to SB 54 today because it has not been agendized, so there's a Brown Act challenge. But I do think it's appropriate. I know there's many of you here today who want to speak, and I, w and I would fully support our coming back and having a conversation specifically focused at SB 54. Um, what, I, what I would propose to do on that is we have a legislative subcommittee of supervisors, Sears and myself, who are tracking the legislation. 54 is going through amendments, so we are going to be tracking that, and at the appropriate time, we will then have a public meeting on this. Um, I believe every one of the supervisors would delight in more confrontational wording of this document containing strong language against the current president and his administration. You have the luxury to play out those feelings. We don't. Those of us, if we don't care about those who, who we are serving that have no voice, this mercurial president could order ICE to come swooping in with no warning, taking mothers, children, and families, He's drastically reducing funding for health care as we speak, and he has proposed eliminating CDBG funding. This is what we are facing with very little to combat back. In this last year, <clears throat> one, of the one of the requests from ICE concerned a gang member in Novato, and if you remember, the gang slaying with machetes that happened in southern Novato. One, one is still missing. I also know from having worked for eight years for Senator John Burton and two years for Senator Carol Migdon that Sheriff Doyle is probably the most liberal sheriff in all of California. I mean, you should see what the ones in the Valley are like. Um, <laughs> the Central Valley. The disagreement today and what we've heard is those is the silence that we're dealing with on the issue of felons. That is a dangerous path and one that I believe our sheriff and his deputies are carefully but successfully treading so far. 
So I believe that this resolution is an affirmation of our promise to stand in the gap with the community and law enforcement for those we serve. And now I'm going to call on the public to make uh, comments. I want to say right now, we have a packed agenda. I allow clapping for, for, for Lisa and for Patrice. Let's not do clapping now, but if you could get in line, uh, you, I'm going to give you uh, how many want to speak, and I can just, okay, I'm going to give you three minutes. Steve. Good morning again, supervisors. <coughs> Steve Bingham from San Rafael, and I'll try to be brief. <coughs> and I, first of all, on behalf of United Marine Rising, we want to applaud the bo board for the intent of bringing this resolution forward. <coughs> and our goal is to work with you to make it better. Uh, I also appreciate that the sheriff came here today to, quite frankly, explain what his policies are. And essentially the issue is that the sheriff is obligated by state law to do certain things. Whether or not he should do more than that is a question that you, in your supervisory role over what his office does, have to think about. In Santa Cruz, you may have read that the Santa Cruz authorities had similar relationship with the sheriff who participated in a raid uh, in good faith thinking they were just rounding up felons. Um, and there's a big distinction between, uh, unfortunately the sheriff made an amalgam and didn't clarify that, between how the law, the state law treats violent crimes and other people. And you need to think about that. It's hard work. You need to research this. But it, down there, what happened is 12 people got swooped up. They had no criminal records, nothing, while ICE was supposedly targeting um, some violent people. Um, and we've heard around the country that what they do is they claim they're targeting uh, people with warrants out for their arrest. And in Georgia and Texas and in Southern California, they scooped up other people. We don't want, in Marin, the sheriff participating in that. The sheriff said that he allows ICE into the jail. He is not obligated to do that. They apparently have a little desk in there with a computer <laughs> to make their life easier. Uh, what he's required to do under state law is one thing. What he does beyond that is another. And this requires a fuller discussion that needs to involve the community and the sheriff and members of the board and per perhaps other people. And one of the things that we specifically would like to see in this resolution is that you direct, uh, that there's a direction to HHS, which I just, as a postscript add, you should take out the word confidentiality and HHS should look at all of its policies. But there's no direction to the sheriff to do anything. If there's a pla uh, uh, an applause line for how great the sheriff's office is, but there uh, were misrepresentations in the piece that he wrote <laughs> in the IJ. I'm sorry to say it. And Your time is up. I and another person it. addressed that. But I think this needs to not get voted on today. And we need to have a chance to have a dialogue and sit down and come up with different language. Is Thank the woman you. in green the last, the last person to speak? Uh, yes, all right, she's the last one in line, and thank you. Go ahead, Pat. Hi, it's Pat Johnstone again, San Anselmo. Um, I did today come, I want to thank you for continuing to take these steps and make these pronouncements from the board. I do also have a deep concern with um, the language regarding the sheriff, and I would suggest a very simple fix to that. You have number nine, the whereas regarding the sheriff. I would simply take that whole language, which is language you support, and put that in the resolve section with a statement that says we direct direct the sheriff's office to review and implement departmental policies to ensure that the things that you're saying in the resolve are true. Um, I, you know, I, the sheriff's statement 
kind of compounded my concerns about this and the concerns that we're hearing from the community about um, the sheriff's department. That is where the biggest level of fear is. And I think having a statement like that from the board, not just saying these things are being done, which is what it says in the whereas section, but we are directing these things to be done, would go, go a bit lo you know, better to, to support that you are supporting our, our, Im our immigrant community. So I hope you will con consider those changes. I mean, I, with regards to SB 54, um, the only thing that's hanging it up from coming to the floor right now is pressure from ICE and pressure from the sheriff's community throughout the state. The California State Is Sheriff's Association has come out against SB 54. Um, um, Sheriff Doyle is the legislative chair of that body. So I, I think just taking this simple step, using your, the words that you already believe to be true and putting it in a resolve section would help alleviate all these, uh, many of these fears. Thank you. Jose. Good morning, uh, members of the board. Jose Varela, the public defender of Marin County. And I come to you to let you know what our office is doing and to assure you that clients that are charged with crimes here in Marin County do have the assistance of capable attorneys who are assisting them in making certain that their constitutional rights to have their uh, case reviewed for immigration consequences is in fact being met. I also wanted to applaud this board for their support of, uh, and the CAO's office for their support of SB 6 and AB 3, which are uh, state statutes that are focused on getting more attorney assistance to immigrants at immigration court and within public defender's offices. Those things are critical. In the end, one of the things that we're seeing is that the prevention pipeline is essential. How do we keep people from even getting arrested? How is it that we keep them from facing jail at all? And that component is something that our outreach program is attempting to do, to counsel, work with teens, work with families, literally letting them know how to avoid negative consequences with police in order that the pipeline can be stopped. The other side is that, in fact, 68% or so of people who have a lawyer in immigration court, in fact, succeed in immigration court. They receive asylum uh, uh, status. They receive some sort of parole status into this country because they're properly uh, represented. And that's really the goal. You see in San Francisco, the, uh, the public defender has been given four attorneys to assist but the reality is it's a drop in the bucket because they get to assist 150 uh, people over a course of a year. We have over 7,000 people waiting in detention in California. The goal is really to work with uh, uh, Senator uh, De Leon and others for SB uh, 6 to be able to uh, invest money and infrastructure into getting attorneys focused in immigration defense into detention court in order to be able to assist those people. So SB 6 is essential. I applaud applaud some of the comments that you have made about SB 54. I believe that while sanctuary cities have their limitation, the morality, the morality of SB 54 is essential to our community. It's the values that are bestowed upon those that we care about that is really essential with sanctuary city. It's the notion that we not only speak about how it is that we have our differences with this new president and this new administration, but that we stand up and that SB 54 is a stand-up statute. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning. Mamie Hubert, uh, San Rafael. I'd like to read what Omar Carrera, director of the Canal Alliance, wrote to some of us about this resolution as it pertains to the sheriff. Uh, Omar wrote, uh, we know from personal stories that someone inside the sheriff's office is alerting ICE when immigrants are released from custody. And we know that ICE agents come to the jail on a regular schedule, and the sheriff's office provides them with free office space. Uh, the sheriff has allowed that he is um, uh, working with that population on the basis of his own discretion. And I think that Marin has largely done a good job with our immigrant population in the welcoming since uh, you supervisors for sure <clears throat> and Diana Bishop chief of the San Rafael police with her community policing uh, policies so it would be helpful I think to the immigrant community and many others of us if you would do uh, Pat's suggestion which is to remove uh, the whereas into the resolved so that the policies of the Sheriff's Department will more closely align 
with the Board of Supervisors uh, goals and hopes in this res resolution and <clears throat> also with uh, Diana Bishop and I think the Novato Police Chief has uh, community policing first and foremost. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Madam President, honorable members of the Board of Supervisors, my name is John Kakinuki. I'm an attorney who lives and practices in this fine city of San Rafael, and uh, I will try not to repeat what other people have said. I understand that you cannot add reference to SB 54 in today's resolution because of the noticing requirement under the Brown Act. However, I have a suggestion as someone who's done a lot of parliamentarian work that together with adopting this resolution, you could adopt a separate sense of the meeting uh, in support of SB 54. And that's my suggestion. Thank you. Good morning, Madam President and other members of the board. Uh, my name is Alan Blau. I live in Mill Valley and am uh, the husband for 60 years of an immigrant. Um, she couldn't be here because she's busy doing other community work. Uh, I've got a few comments. One is I think that the sense of the community, from what I gather, is pro SB 54. At least I think that's what you you reflect, and uh, I don't think that the sheriff reflects that sense. And the other thing is, I don't think, even though there's an implication in, in his piece, that uh, the immigrants would support his position. I think you can find out if, if he proposes that, that what he's doing is for the benefit of the, of the immigration, of the uh, uh, immigrants in uh, in this community, why don't you find out from them if they think it's a good idea? And the other thing I was going to suggest is that uh, the sheriff indicates that he feels that the position of SB 54 is unconstitutional. I think that's an issue for the courts to decide, not for him to make that decision. Thank you. Good morning, supervisors, um, and good morning to the members of the public. Um, my name is Lucia Martel Dow, and I'm the uh, director of Immigration Legal Services at Canal Alliance. We are uh, leading the leading organization and services for um, low-income um, Spanish-speaking immigrants in, in the county. Thank you for including this resolution and for discussing these issues um, today. I also want to thank uh, members of the public and grassroots organizations that have come up and offer our support to our community. And we also want to recognize, obviously, that law enforcement plays a very important role in maintaining and keeping our uh, community safe. But we also want to say that it's important that in order to maintain those community safe, that those resources that we have that are scarce are actually not used to cooperate with ICE. We do know, because the sheriff has said this just earlier, that he does not necessarily uh, cooperate with us in an active way. Um, by having agreements with them or by if being uh, cooperating during potential raids to the community. But we also know, as a public defender mentioned uh, very recently, there's a pipeline of deportation in this country. And the way deportation works is that once somebody has a negative interaction with law enforcement, then their fingerprints are run and the system starts. So it is key for ICE to have cooperation with law enforcement, with local law enforcement. Without that cooperation, it would be very difficult for ICE to actually be able to conduct any type of mass deportation scheme. And um, we believe that having access to detainees when they are the most vulnerable, I think it actually violates the due process. We have to understand that there's a criminal system in this country and there's an immigration system in this country. If we allow our criminal resources, or the criminal system resources, to cooperate with ICE, we're actually allowing the most vulnerable, somebody who could be in a very vulnerable situation, who actually has not been even convicted of a crime, to have very harsh immigration consequences and be separated of their families. We are not saying that those people have committed crimes that are actually uh, dangerous, that um, could be posed a danger to be released. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that let the criminal system run its course and the due process be upheld when people are detained at the jails, particularly in the county jails. So the language in the whereas section 
provides a sense of safety to the immigrant community that may not exist. Because if they, if they don't have access to an attorney, as Jose Varela mentioned very recently, it would be very easy for ICE to actually target them. In fact, the sheriff already also discloses numbers that if people are advised that they have the right to talk to an attorney, then they would probably decline and they most likely will not start the deportation machine that we have seen before. So I urge you to, to consider that that language could be providing a sense of safety that may not be uh, the case for, for our community. I do applaud that the sheriff is very transparent about his policies and that he is upholding the trust and the truth act, which I think is part of the law. So what you're saying in the whereas is actually just following what the law says, our current uh, California law. Your and is up. yes, so thank you very much. I just want to make sure that um, uh, you do know that there's a lot of fear in the community, as you mentioned before, and I really applaud your efforts. And uh, thank you very much for everybody for taking this issue into consideration. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Casey Epp. I'm the supervising attorney from Fair Housing Advocates of Northern California. And I will be brief because she did such a good job. But I just wanted to speak uh, very briefly. I was concerned when I heard the connection between an arrest and concerns for public safety. And I just wanted to make sure that I expressed that, as we all know, with a lot of problems with the criminal justice system, that the individuals who are most likely to be arrested are most likely to be charged with crimes. Um, I'm saying there's uh, certain populations that are more targeted for those, and an arrest does not necessarily um, indicate any any concern for public safety. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning again, Laura Eberly, YWCA, San Francisco, and Marin. Um, first, thank you for putting this forward. I appreciate you all taking a clear stance uh, on behalf of protecting our immigrant communities. Um, one of my privileges at YWCA is that I work as our inclusion coach. So we work with organizations and individuals that want to move um, their diversity efforts forward into true inclusion. And one of the things that we see, of course, is people who have fear about communities that they are less familiar with, and particularly about communities of color. Um, so while I know that this is, of course, not the intent of anyone on this board or, of course, of the sheriff's office, I would caution what we allow in the name of public safety um, and question whose safety uh, does it serve for people to live in fear of their neighbors and whose safety if we affirm negative stereotypes about people, um, as the person before me commented, who may have been arrested and not convicted of any crime. So I would just caution how we use that language. Um, and again, thank you for taking a clear stand on this. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Grant Colfax. Good, good morning, board. Uh, Supervisor Rice asked me just to say a few words. Um, if the resolution does go forward, obviously Health and Human Services would be very pleased to carry out the, the uh, actions that, that you request of us, um, and we will do so in a timely manner. Um, Supervisor Rice also asked me to mention, we, we've been having, as Health and Human Services, we've been having a number of conversations with community about the, the environment and making sure that people understand we are open for business and our services uh, remain accessible. One of those conversations is going to happen um, on uh, March 29th, 7 to 9 p.m. Um, at the Albero Community Center. Um, uh, Supervisor Rodoni is going to be um, leading off with some remarks and we expect there'll be other county officials there. Um, the event is sponsored by uh, Marine Rising. So just to, to add that, thanks. Thank you. Wait, uh, Dr. Colfax, hold on, don't leave. Ooh. Question for you. Um, so one of the speakers had suggested that we revise the language in, in the bullet, one of the bullet points so that um, it's the second one that says direct the Department of Health and Human Services to review its confidentiality policies to better ensure eligible individuals are not deterred from seeking services, et cetera. Um, the suggestion was that language you changed, so it's broader than that and not just direct the confidentiality policies. Would you no, I'd like to discuss a little bit why the focus on confidentiality policies may or may not be the way to go. Yeah, well, I think that the focus on confidentiality is really from what we're hearing in the community. Um, they are asking for some further information about what our, what our confidentiality um, uh, requires us to do or not do. Um, so I think we were just going to take a deeper dive into some of the information that we have. I will say that a lot of the information we have is required to go to the state. So at that point, it becomes, becomes state information. Certainly, um, as a result of the environment, we're looking at across the department at our policies, making sure that we're engaging appropriately with people, and also that we're giving them the information that they need to make a decision about, you know, what their what their behavior will be in the future. We we only have a certain locus of control over how services are delivered, um, and we certainly 
um, want to make sure that people who are most vulnerable have the opportunities to access those services because we think they do better with them. But we also acknowledge, given the federal environment, that people may make um, very uh, reasonable decisions in terms of the risk benefit of, of what they see for their families and their needs. These, fam these communities, while vulnerable, they're also very resilient. And I think that um, they, they, with the information, accurate information, they should have the um, autonomy to make uh, decisions that, that they feel are right for them. And I just want to ask the sheriff uh, uh, if you have any uh, remarks after hearing the public. Thank you. Uh, uh, I just want to make a couple clarifications. Uh, Mr. Bingham um, mentioned something that had happened in Santa Cruz County, which I only read about. Uh, however, I would direct him to our website that has our enforcement policies, and working with ICE at that level is strictly prohibited uh, by policy. And as for the pipeline in the jail, actually what happens when someone's arrested and, and comes to the jail, their fingerprints go through a variety of databases, which also includes ICE, and that alerts ICE if, if there's a suspicion that someone is, is in jail that's undocumented. So uh, that's the extent of, of the cooperation as they come and they attempt to interview people. We don't call them when people are going are, are gonna to be released from jail. We don't have the authority to, um, to uh, put people on detainers. There's a couple of court decisions that prohibit that. Um, as far as my, my piece being disingenuous or not accurate, I, I wrote that based on a, a request that we just sort of publicize what our policies and procedures are. I didn't write it for fame or fortune, or uh, so it was just an information piece, uh, and it's contained in our policies. So. Thank you. All right. Um, we have already voted on the resolution, which we did before we went to comment. Would you like to vote again? <laughs> Well, again, I, I think uh, I would reaffirm my request that we at least provide a sense right. that we'd like to go forward with uh, SB 54. Can, can I make a comment on that? Yeah. Um, I, I um, think the suggestion that you made, um, or someone made, to um, to take it up at the within the, our sub our subcommittee on legis our legislative committee, mm -hmm. but also there was another um, piece of legislation that was mentioned by our public defender, and I suspect there will be other pieces yes, of legislation. We have already supported that yeah. legislation. Okay. SB six and AB eighty three. Yeah. Those were letters of support that were sent right. by mm -hmm. uh, by our county administrator's office. Um, but we probably need to make that information more broadly known. To them. And also, yeah. I, and not know, it, there may be other things that yeah. come that are right. coming forward. So I would, I would ask our ledge committee to be having really our finger up in the air and, and catching all those things, yeah. so that that you know SB 54 w may be brought forward, but there may be other legislation. Yeah, absolutely, as well. thank you. We'll do that. I want to thank everyone for coming and for in the rain and for staying and for not getting parking tickets. Um, and please uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to go to um, number nine on the agenda.